All right, so let's get into it. This is what we're making today. It's a rack that automatically chops up a drum break. I'm using the Amen because that's like the one, right? But you could probably use any drum break that you want to chop up, chop up or any sample you want. Um, and the idea is it uses a couple stock Ableton tricks to, to jump around here. All with no hands. And then the other thing that's happening is there's a second rack behind it that uses an LFO to jump behind or jump around between a bunch of different effects. And we could turn that on and off. Right? So there's just this rack. And then there's this thing. Um, so this is actually going to be in two parts. Today, we're covering mostly the first part of it. And then on Thursday, I'm going to get into how this is done. All right, so to get started, the first thing we need is our Amen break. Winston's Amen brother, there it is. Um, now we're gonna need the simpler device. So in instruments, put that on the new MIDI track. Okay, um, now normally I would go through and you need to warp this and also figure out where you wanna start it from. All right, so uh, if you want to skip ahead, I'm just going to warp this real quick, uh, keep the current timing. I usually make sure that my start point is on a, a drum because there's some horns and stuff in the beginning. I'll turn the metronome off. All right, cool. So I will normally, when I'm warping, I say 1-1, one, one, start 1-1 one, one here, and then warp from here. Let me just check it. Downbeat. Oh, we want to make sure. Not bad. Uh, warp, 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 warp. There we go. All right. Ha. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is take my simpler device, put it on a new MIDI track. I'm going to drag in this to the simpler device, put it in slicing mode, right? And now I want to make sure the sensitivity or the slice by, if it's on transient, it's going to do every drum, every drum hit. I usually put it on beat. And then for this, let's do eighth notes. You can play around with that. Um, oh, and make sure you hit warp. If you want to hear it play through, you could put the playback mode to through. And it'll keep going after you take your hands off the keyboard. Um, but for the sake of for the sake of this rack, we want to make sure that this is set to mono. Right? Because we only want it to play back single slices of stuff. Alright? So now the next thing, if we look at the fully built, built out thing, there's three. MIDI devices before this that are kind of making all the magic happen, right? So uh, the first MIDI device that we're going to be using here um, is the arpeggiator. All right, so let's just get this guy going. Arpeggiator, cool. I just need one MIDI MIDI hit in the beginning to trigger it. All right, so this is doing something now. It's triggering, right? Um, I'm put, I want to put hold on for the arpeggiator so it keeps triggering after that initial note. I digress. Um, so there's a couple things going on here. Um, it's re-triggering just the first one. So we got to get this thing jumping around a little bit. So let's add a couple of steps. All right. Okay. So now it's jumping around. But it's doing the same thing over and over again. So uh, one way to just make this cooler is you go to random. So that's like sort of what we want, but not really. You could try random other, All right? But if we just cut to the chase here, you'll see what I did. All right, so you're gonna wanna use the random plugin, right? Just drop that guy in. Um, I usually keep the retriggering to eighths on the arpeggiator, the distance to zero, the gate all the way open and the rate on eighths, right? And then you just bring up the chance control and the random. Uh, it's 
doing what we want. Cool. All right. So now that is behaving. Right? I know in this one I was playing around with the scale plugin to limit the range, but there doesn't seem to be any gaps. Like it's not jumping to notes off the map. So um, if it starts doing that, you can use the scale plugin to limit the how far it'll go. But this is sounding good. So, okay, cool. All right, so now at this point, you kind of have the magic happening here. We have our, our auto beat chopper thing, right? Um, so now at this point, what I would do is put this together in a group for yourself, just to kind of keep your own sanity here. Um, and now what I typically would like to do is now we get into the fun, glitchy kind of stuff. So because um, right, it's chopping up the break, but we want to do some things to it to make it more interesting. So, um, yeah, beat repeat is kind of my bread and butter for this kind of thing. Um, just in terms of setup, I usually put the variation somewhere in the middle. Um, I'll turn on no triplet chance. Depends how nuts you want it to go. You know, I try to, I try to set it up so it's not doing too many of those, like, rolls. Like, it's kind of annoying. Um, some pitch change is cool too. You play with it, you know, the mix level and that kind of stuff. You know, putting some decay in here is usually helpful to, to get rid of like the zipper effect if it catches like a really short one, um, like a really short subdivision, but you play around, you know. Cool. So there's that. And then if you see the original one I built here, there's a bunch of things. This is more just like housekeeping, right? Um, because at this point, you can start building in some of these macros. This is where it gets a little bit more more fun, right? So um, first of all, like let's each of these is kind of serving a purpose. I think the compressor is a good place to start just because that's going to help keep things like sort of behaving. Uh, level wise and we can automate a control um, we'll get into this in a second let's just set basic compressor setting here cool good enough we'll come back to that for sure um, then the next thing we're gonna come into I'm sure I'll end up doing this a little different than I did for the first one that I made um, do some kind of EQ right um, I think for saturation, you can use a saturator, um, but I really like using the drum bus lately um, because, again, we have like a bunch of tools in here all at once that we can kind of combine in interesting ways. So we're going to open that up. Uh, actually, let me just EQ this real quick. Just get something going here. that Get down a bit I love slightly yeah again totally to taste that can be whatever you want for the drum bus. Um, I like to filter off the extreme high ends. The transient control will automate and just. Something like that. The boom control we can automate. That'll be fun. Um, but let's just start there. Then it's always good to put a utility plug in and these things somewhere. Um, so uh, I'm mainly going to be using this for the width control um, because it's nice to be able to control uh, control the width. That's what it's for, I guess. Um, yeah, but some people like to mono the bass, you know, depending. That's a good move. But anyway, um, let's start building some control surfaces into this beast. All right. So uh, the first thing with something like this that's good to do, I'm going to map the arpeggiator rate just call this rate 
Um, and then I'm going to go in and limit the range. You just hit the map button. Um, and I'm going to say the fastest I want this getting is 16th notes. And we'll maybe slow it all the way down to quarter notes. Um, it gets kind of crazy. If you go beyond that. Or maybe you can. I'm, maybe you have crazy ideas. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is what I do. But, so it's good to have the rate on a knob, right? That's cool. Um, then, as far as other control surfaces, what's a cool one I did over here? Uh, oh, drive control. Duh. All right, that's a big one. Um, so we're going to automate both of these. I'm going to put the drive to this, label it drive, and I'm going to actually put the crunch control there as well. Uh, and let's rename this drive. Now this will move both knobs, except, again, I don't want this to get too, too nuts. Um, so let me just make sure the crunch doesn't get heavy, because that's the one that hurts. Cool, let's flip that distortion mode on. A little more scoop. And actually, let's do ourselves a favor. Because as we push this, I want to um, I want to bring the output level down a little bit. So how we do this, you map the output level here. Then you go and invert the range, right? Um, and we don't want it to get too quiet. So let's keep it at like a minimum of uh, like 16. And then not let it go above zero. Let's just give this a spin. So what's happening is as these go up, this one goes down. That's all it does. Oop. All right, so let's let's get a feel. All right, it's it's going a little lower than I want, so I'm just gonna bring the ceiling or the floor of it up a little higher. Something like that is good. Maybe split the difference. I'm okay with it getting a little bit louder. It is distortion, but. Cool. All right. Nice. Um, what was the next one I did here? Compressor. Okay, cool. So similar tricks in play here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to map the threshold there. So it's called this comp. Um, so now as we, oh, actually we have to invert the range, right? Because as we raise the comp control, we want the threshold to come down. So we're just going to go to invert. And then again, we want to make sure it doesn't go all the way to the floor and totally destroy your signal here. Come on. Ah, uh, that needs to go lower. At least for this one. You might, if you use a different sample, you're probably going to have to come in and, and adjust that, that threshold. But now you know how to do it. Let's just make this come down more. Let's do 23. Let's see. Well, let's go a little further. A um, little further. There's going to be a bunch of things here. All right, that sounded pretty smush. Now we're going to use the same output trick here. Right? So as we turn this up, as the threshold comes down, the output is going to go up to compensate. We're just going to limit the range so it doesn't go totally batshit crazy. Um, so the bottom of the range doesn't want to be totally, oh wait, yeah, we want a minimum level here. So let's see, compressor output gain, let's keep this, maybe we'll do minus five. Um, and then we do not want 36 dB of boost, that would be fucking crazy. Let's do like three. Nah, bad aim, it's got to come up more. Cool. Cool. And now let's do one more parameter. Let me put the um, the ratio there. I think this I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, like three to one in this level is okay. Can we get heavier? totally smashed. I'm okay with that. 
but again, now that you know the principle behind it, um, you know, you can season to taste. Um, okay. All right, this punch thing. This is a cool one because if you look at what I did here, it's the same principle, right? So uh, I just called it punch, but really what it's messing with um, is two things, right? The boom control and then the transient control. So let's build this. Um, you're going to go in your drum bus, map boom to this, and then transients to the same thing. We're going to rename this. You could use punch or whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? I'm going to limit the boom side of it to, uh, let's see, let's go no higher than 50%. And then just shave a little bit off the top of the transient tool. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was what I have. You, you don't, when you bring it all the way down, you don't want the transient control to destroy all your transients. So what we will do is go to transients and set this to zero. So now as we bring this down, it won't, it won't ever take anything away. It'll only enhance as you turn it up. Actually, why not? Actually, let's let's go ham with this. 1.00, why not? Yeah, really, right? And then the final control, let's do a width control, just because that's helpful. Uh, I usually rename something simpler. Can actually make the base follow it that would maybe be nice um, so again I'm just gonna limit the range on that because um, I don't want it going all the way up to 500 Hertz so let's just cap this off at like 200 start with that and actually if you want we could do this too we could make the base mono only engage if you touch that knob. Um, so how we do that, um, where it says base mono, you set this to one. And then, so one through 127. So basically when it's all the way down, it's off. But as soon as you move it to any other value, it turns on. See that? So nothing. So as, basically, as you turn it up and you make it wider, it's going to bring up that bass mono frequency to keep the low end in place. Um, yeah, and you could decide if that's helpful for you or not. But anyway, so that's basically the rack. Um, and here's the deal. Here's what I'm doing with this now. Um, part two of this, it's Monday now. Um, I'm going to build this auto glitcher the second part of this on Thursday. This whole video is gonna be up on YouTube for free. Um, this this part of the video, I'm probably gonna do a clip on Thursday, um, and then I'm gonna put the, the full thing on my Patreon and stuff. Um, both of these racks I'm gonna put on glitchmagic.com for you, um, and then if you do the Patreon, it's gonna be, you know, um, it'll just be available because then you're subscribing anyway. So anyway, um, you know how YouTube works. If you wanna like, subscribe, I'm gonna be doing this more regularly. Um, hit the buttons and then uh, I also have a patreon link in the description So if you want to support the channel support all the work that goes into making these things you can do that You know through uh, direct support, which I'm a big believer in so anyway, I will see you Thursday. Take care <laughs>